please, um, excuse the mess. I am currently taking a COVID rapid antigen test. This is a strange keyboard. Let's talk about it. I don't actually have a very high quality video of my first unboxing, seeing as I unboxed the thing in an Ikea. In the box, you get the keyboard, two AAA batteries that are already pre-installed, the Logi Bolt receiver, which I'll talk more about later, four extra emoji keycaps, and a user manual. The design is a big selling point of the Logitech Pop Keys keyboard. It has a very contrasting colourful design that will stand out in any environment, no matter what colourway you pick. The chassis is made entirely of plastic, but it still feels really nice and high quality, and it's surprisingly heavy. I couldn't tell you what percent size it is, I've got no idea, but it is a compact keyboard. No numpad or other less used function keys. If you play GTA 5 with mouse and keyboard at all, this keyboard is not for you. To be fair, neither is any compact keyboard. The keyboard comes in three different colorways. Blast Yellow, which is the one I have, Daydream Mint, and Heartbreaker Rose. It doesn't have any retractable feet to raise the keyboard, but it's, it's essentially permanently raised anyway because of the way the keyboard is designed. So that hasn't been a problem for me. The keycaps are very easy to remove and replace with other keycaps. I'm pretty sure they're Cherry MX keycap compatible, but I'm not 100% sure so don't quote me on that. In terms of what is printed onto the keycaps, the font and symbols all look very clean. One thing that is slightly annoying is the start and alt keys. The keys are printed with both Windows and Mac OS Legends. So the start key also has an option symbol, and the alt key also has a command symbol. Uh, if I were Logitech, I probably would have included separate keycaps for both operating systems in the box, similar to what Keychron does with the K2, and maybe there are other keyboards, I don't know. Oh, one last thing about the keycaps, you might have noticed something different to most other keyboards. The escape key is shinier than the rest. The keycaps are also circular, similar to a typewriter. These take a bit of time to get used to, but after a couple of days, I was personally back up to the same words per minute and accuracy as I was on my old keyboard. If you're in a dark environment, or just like having lights on your keyboard, I'd stay away from this one. This keyboard has no lighting whatsoever. If you need a solution for that, I've been plugging this IKEA USB light into the back of my PC and just pointing it at the keyboard. To be fair, my desk doesn't have much room, and like the back of my desktop is like facing this way, and like that's like that's not like I don't think many people are going to be doing that. So, before I continue, I want to state right now, I'm not a keyboard expert. In fact, this is my first mechanical keyboard. Uh, I'm reviewing this keyboard as the average consumer looking to buy a keyboard, not someone who knows a lot about keyboards. With that out of the way, the Logitech Pop Keys uses TCC TTC brown tactile switches, which feel and sound great. A quick Google search tells me that these switches aren't Logitech proprietary switches or anything, and you could buy them for your own keyboard build if you really wanted to. The switches are not hot swappable, so you can't go out and buy a new set of switches and replace the switches that are already on the keyboard. You could probably disassemble it and do some soldering, but that is way too much work. These switches feel great anyway, so I don't see myself replacing them. Ever. Because this isn't specifically a gaming keyboard, this keyboard uses the Logitech Options software as opposed to Lo uh, Logitech G-Hub, I think it's called. Yeah. You don't specifically need the software, but if you want to customize the emoji keys on the right or manage other devices the keyboard is connected to, you'll want to have it installed. The Logitech Pop Keys doesn't have a cable. At all. It's 100% wireless. But there are multiple options for connecting to a PC or other device. The first option is obviously Bluetooth. The keyboard comes with Bluetooth Low Energy 5.1 and has the ability to connect to three devices at once, with the first three function keys being used to switch between them. The second option is the Logi Bolt USB receiver. This is ideal for my situation as my desktop doesn't have any Bluetooth functionality. I want to talk more about Logi Bolt though. It's not like Bluetooth or any other wireless USB receiver. It's made with security in mind. It uses a mix of Bluetooth Low Energy Security Mode 1, Security Level 4, 
also known as US Federal Information Processing Standards Mode, and it also uses other Logitech technologies that prevent vulnerabilities. Along with security, Logibolt is also designed for low latency in congested environments. So, like, you know, an office environment where, like, you know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people are all using Logibolt devices. They have this cool graph, I'm just going to throw it up on screen. Up to six peripherals can be paired to one Logibolt USB receiver, which might be handy at some point in the future. However, there's currently only keyboard and mice that support Logibolt, and I see no reason to pair more than one of each to a single receiver. But like, each to their own, I guess. You also can't pair non-Bolt devices to a Bolt receiver, or Bolt devices to a non-Bolt receiver. So, if you have an existing Logitech device like the Amex Master, Unless it is the Logi Bolt edition, it won't work. Unfortunately, the system isn't flawless. I'm sure the security is fantastic, but I've been having a problem recently when my keyboard suddenly disconnects and continues to spam the last key I pressed. I even ran into the issue a couple of times while writing the script. Now, in here I have written that I fixed it by moving the USB receiver closer to the keyboard, but then it started happening again. Not as frequently, but yeah, still happened. Okay, enough of my rambling, how does it perform while gaming? For me, personally, it feels great. But I am not a competitive gamer, and if you are, you might want to avoid this keyboard. Artings.com recorded 14.2 milliseconds of latency using the Bolt receiver, and 23.9 milliseconds using Bluetooth. To put that into perspective, the Logitech uh, G613, Logitech's cheapest mechanical gaming keyboard, has a recorded latency, of 3.4 milliseconds with the light speed receiver and 7.7 .7 milliseconds over Bluetooth. Wow. But then again, this keyboard isn't a gaming keyboard. It's made for the office. In office tasks like writing documents, doing spreadsheets, even video editing, the latency is barely noticeable. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the price. The Logi Pop Keys is very affordable at only $129.95. The keyboard we compared to the Pop Keys for latency is $199.95. This keyboard is a fantastic, high quality, affordable entryway into the world of mechanical keyboards. I'm not saying this is the cheapest mechanical keyboard ever, but it's pretty damn competitive, especially compared to other Logitech products. So, should you buy it? If you're doing latency sensitive, highly competitive gaming, or if you're in a noise-sensitive work environment, then no, not at all, stay away. But if you're doing casual gaming and other non-gaming tasks, or work in an office where high security is important, then I highly recommend this keyboard. It's great. Go buy one from your local tech store, that's where I bought mine.